So here's the big question. Where is all of this going as a future? Of this? That's really my main thing, right? And I see this sort of as the graduation of this concept of synthetics, you know, made up stuff, artificial things, you know, synthetic writing, images, videos, media, synthetic friends, synthetic humans. You know, I'll just give the examples again here. So ChatGPT and of course Midjourney, that is my favorite app for making alternative uh, shots of images and so on. Synthetic videos, this is a, an app called Synthesia, that's very powerful. Synthetic media, of course, this is a great challenge for social media as we're going into the future where social media bots are already a big nuisance, a real problem. Synthetic friends replica, I'll talk about that in a second. And then synthetic humans, which I'll talk about as well. But this is Amica, right? It's an app that's, well, it's a robot, right? <laughs> that actually combines the language control and uh, other things that are quite scary. Check it out on YouTube. So. A replica is a great example. You may know replica as, as the promise of recreating a friend that has passed away. Uh, and this is a really bizarre story. And I want to play this video from replica here because that is really something where we have to say, well, what exactly is happening here? And are we using technology in the right way? However, for a lot of people, human friendships um, in, in, in the moment maybe are not you know, possible or even they have human friends, but they're not ready to you know, be open with them, be, be vulnerable with them. So think of it as something that you're training on, something that helps you uh, build these relationships that you can take into real life. And so for us, the main idea is to measure that we actually are decreasing loneliness instead of increasing it. Because a lot of people come to think about it like in the, you know, at night in the darkest, maybe mo darkest emotional moments sometimes. And so this was the CEO of Replica speaking. Okay, and it's really interesting to me to to see what she's saying about you know finding a companion because you may be worried about having a young I, I don't really get it, I have to admit. I, I think this is a little bit far-fetched and Replica has gotten through all kinds of issues lately by doing what's called sex, bo sex botting, sending sex messages or sexting messages uh, to people who use the app. Long story, but I kind of wonder where this is oh, going. But the next one is more interesting as humans, you, you may have seen the series on Netflix. Uh, that is kind of the next iteration of you know, taking this one step further from the app, you know, to a robot like Amica with a body, and that becoming sort of the next thing. You should watch it on Netflix. There's a bunch of stuff like this. Of course, a little bit far-fetched from the taste point of view. Then we have um, Neon from Samsung. All right, check out this trailer. Hi, I'm Neon. Artificial human. It's a little bit different from an AI. I was computationally created based on how real humans look and behave. Every neon has a unique personality, emotion, and intelligence. I'll help you find your style. I have to admit I'm a little I'll bit worried you know on that too. You. you know, where exactly is this going? <laughs> and then of course, we have Blade Runner 2046. Remember the scene where uh, Ryan, Ryan Gosling, I think that's, that's him, right? Uh, his girlfriend is changing based on the hologram that he desires and then later on the power goes out and he's so super lonely because she just evaporates right after he buys that fancy stick for her it, it kind of goes in a very similar direction of all the discussions about us trying to find powerful simulations right? so that leads me to concerns and worries and I'll, I'll be finishing soon and you can ask me some questions i know there's a lot of chats going on here <laughs> thanks very much so first a little chart about you know this is from uh, pwc Great risks and issues about AI. I want to start with this, the ethical risks, right? The lack of value risk. This is the biggest risk for me. Not understanding what kind of values we're pursuing. There's no value alignment. It's just all like quick fixes, right? And then we have a performance risk, the risk of error, the risk of bias, the risk of opaqueness, the black box, the explainability, you know, all that stuff. And then we have economic risk, you know, job displacement. That is real, even though it's mostly not jobs, but tasks. So there's a lot of risks associated, and I estimate that we're going to see some regulation here, and we already see quite a bit of discussions about this. Education will change because, you know, if I can have a paper written, now there's an engine that can detect the paper being written or not. But, you know, this will change education forever in a way as well. The worst part to me is this, media, politics, and democracy. By having bots disseminate things that are completely made up, like they are most of the time now. I'll give you a great example going back to Brexit in a minute, but you know, other things like this where we have plagiarism, right? We have C uh, CNET, uh, 
announced the other day that they have been using the app chat GPT to create articles on CNET and people weren't picking up on it, right? And they got hammered for doing this. I and mean, we have a lot of this thing already going on. We have Getty Images now suing the creators of uh, Stable Diffusion, right? For scraping its image content. Of course, these guys are very good at suing people. Uh, I'm a customer, but hey, I, I think they, um, they're taking it a bit far sometimes. But anyway, be interesting to watch. And, and of course, we have uh, uh, apps that pass a US medical exam now. And that's going to bring up a lot of questions about how do we judge people and what do we do. So the biggest thing right now to me is not that machines will all of a sudden become sentient or have human agency. It's about humans believing that the bullshit is real, right? That they are sentient, that they know more, that they know better, just like we prefer Google Maps over our own maps sometimes, right? And that we don't, that we don't stay critical, that we become lazy, basically, right? We say, okay, that's enough. We'll generate this thing in a love letter and send it off to my loved one, and you know I'll get success from that. I think that is kind of a tempting thought, you know, my kind of machine thinking, and believing what they say. Like, let's go back to Brexit, right? Remember that whole uh, campaign that was on Facebook and social media about the Turkey uh, becoming part of the European Union and therefore Turkish people ending up coming to England, right? This was a, a huge Brexit thing. And you know, we'll see where that has gotten us. Same idea, right? Not AI, I don't think, but created by humans, but same basic concept. Then I'm worried about money and markets. Like Samsung clearly is interested in the business here. What will their concern be about people? And will they actually care about people? And Microsoft in investing the 10 billion, right? What are they gonna do with that? Well, I would trust Microsoft more with the right thing than most other companies, but still, you know, that's a concern. Uh, they're going to use it to beef up, of course, their search engine, their, their Outlook suite, and Microsoft Windows, and so on. And we have all this tantalizing numbers here, right? AI-assisted knowledge will quadruple the, the power of, a, of uh, people working, paralegals, lawyers, bookkeepers, and stuff. But the question is, will they get paid more or less because of that? And will it be evenly distributed, what people are making? And, you know, artificial intelligence is going to be everywhere. So... Sam Altman, the CEO of uh, OpenAI, again, he says, as AI produces more, most of the world's good, it, people will be freed up to spend more time with people they care about. You know, that sounds very optimistic and very sort of uh, techno-oriented as optimism, right? But is, is this technology really going to give us the, the sort of going away from people and profit, uh, from profit only to their people plan that purpose idea? Is that what's really going to happen? I think we need to have a bit more than just technology for that to happen. So interesting, wishful thinking. Biggest challenge for me is really this, right? Can we trust AI? And can we trust it to do the right thing? You know, logic alone, yeah, logic alone. We're not logical beings, really. We use logic, but we're really very illogical, inefficient emotions. Right? That's our thing, right? Logic alone is utterly insufficient for life. I think this is the biggest thing about ChatGPT. It's helpful, but logic is logic, and it can be faulty, right? It can be wrong. It lacks any sort of and androrhythmic, you know, human androrhythms, not algorithms, comprehension. It doesn't know what it is or what it says, right? It has a very reductionist approach to real life. So in other words, the AI sees 3% of real life. We see 100%, and then the AI says, this is your 100%, right? Clearly, that's not going to happen. Very, very big issue, right? Logic alone is not enough. Right? And I, I really, I think we have to really understand where this has taken us, right? And, and how do we prevent logic from taking over? Because it's so easy and it makes us so compliant and instantly sharp. Right? I said in my last book, Technology versus Humanity, that's the header of my book, right? We should embrace technology, but not become technology.